Welcome to the Modern Persian Food Podcast. We're food bloggers, Bita Arabian. And Bita Nazim Kelly. We're here to share with you the rich flavors and fresh ingredients of Persian cooking, how to incorporate them in today's modern lifestyles. We're excited to introduce you to the flavors, tastes, and techniques we use, and also our own cultural stories and perspectives growing up in the U.S. in a Persian family. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to episode three, where we're going to talk about rice, polo, and how we incorporate it into our beautiful Persian cuisine. We'll give you a little bit of a history lesson, types of rices we use, and how we cook it and serve it to our family and friends. We'll also talk about what our favorite layered rice dishes are, and of course, how to make tadik. So let's start, episode number three. Bita, tell us a little bit about the history of rice and what kind of rice we use. Sure, it all starts with a special type of rice. It's an ancient grain that comes from India, Pakistan. And it's a very long grain, white basmati rice. So a quick history on it is that way back when there were salespeople, tradesmen that came from India and Pakistan and sold basmati rice to Persians. And the meaning of the word basmati, it's a Sanskrit word that means fragrant aromatic which is absolutely true about basmati rice. Slightly sweet smelling, fragrant, perfumey rice. But Bita, let's start to get into some of the ways that Persian rice is served. Yeah. So as you know, there are a few different ways that the rice is actually served. The primary way that we have rice is actually plain white rice that we cook, and we'll get into that in a few minutes. But it's basically just a plain white rice, which is topped with different stews of meats or vegetables and sauces. And it's basically the foundation of a lot of Persian dishes is the white rice. That's one way to make it. Another way is to actually take that white rice and layer it. And when we do that, we call it polo as opposed to cello. Cello is just the plain white one, but then polo is like a mixed rice or a pilaf of sorts. And that is layered with different ingredients like different nuts or berries or fruits or meats, and it's incorporated into it and that can be its own standalone dish. Another way that Persians use rice is in attaching, which is a more baked version. And then that is actually mixed with saffron and yogurt and baked in the oven after the individual rice is parboiled. That's a different way to do it. But those are the main ways that it's served. And there's different ways that you can cook it. So I mentioned parboiling. Bita, what ways do you use to cook the rice? Yeah, just touching on some of the things that you said. Cello, the plain rice, is often used with kebabs. Yes, good point. And I used to think cello meant like a kind of kebab or like a charboiled kebab. (laughs) And so it took me until I was more and more interested in Persian food to learn that the cello was the rice, specifically the plain rice. The polo is, like you said, the mixed rice. How I make cello is in a rice cooker and I have a post and it goes step by step on the blog that which we'll link back to of how to make rice in a rice cooker. Mainly, most importantly for Persian chefs is we rinse our rice and the rinsing is to wash out the starches. And a lot of what we do in the preparation is to get it so that it's not sticky. So Persian rice needs to be separated and be able to be fluffy with a fork. So rinsing the starches out is one step. Another step in preparing Persian rice is the soaking step. Some people soak for half an hour or a couple hours. I know other people soak it all night. I often skip the soaking step altogether. And then the last piece I'd say of differentiating how Persians cook their rice is that we do salt our water when we're cooking Persian rice. So when I cook Persian rice in a rice cooker, it's a pretty easy formula. I pretty much put It depends how many people, but typically I'll put two cups of rice and three cups of water and salt and a little bit of oil. And then I cover the lid with a dish towel and then I just turn the rice cooker on and it's so super easy. Oh, you put the damkuni, which is basically the tea towel or paper towel or something around the lid. You do that from the very beginning when you use the rice cooker? I do. Oh. How do you do it? Well, I actually don't really use a rice cooker. 
I just make it on the stove. And so I'll add that tea towel or the paper towel step after all the water has been absorbed to work on to making the crunchy tadik. Let's talk about what that does. So that is actually the fabric of the tea towel or some layers of paper towel in between the lid and the pot actually absorbs the extra moisture so that you can get like a crispy tadik and also so the grains of rice, like you said, are fluffed up and separate. And it keeps the steam in. Yeah. And you know the Persian word for the cloth that wraps around the lid of the pot. Uh Uh-huh. There's a Farsi word for it. Yeah. Damkoni. Mm Mm-hmm. And then they have like these little bonnet actually that can like cover the lid. But if you don't have one of those, you can just use like a tea towel or like layers of paper towel to absorb the extra moisture in there. Oh, how cute. I've never heard it referred to as a bonnet. It's like a hat or a bonnet for the lid. Yeah. That is so cute. I think of it as like wrapping a present because I usually use a towel and then I just Uh wrap it up like a present. Yeah. Well, that makes it so easy for the rice cooker then that you just do that from the beginning and then just let it go. Yeah, I don't even think about it. Like, In fact, it, I didn't write a post about it for so long because for me, I, I don't think about it. It's just like automatic autopilot when I use a rice cooker. But when I did write the post on it, it's my big claim to fame. It's number one, if you search for how to cook rice in a rice cooker, my recipe comes up. So I guess it was needed and it's not easy for everyone. That's awesome. But the other way to cook rice is the parboiling method, which is what we use for the layered rice dishes. Now, this method, I do cook in a pot. It requires a lot of water, and the initial steps are the same. You still wash and rinse your rice four or five times and then soak it. So that part's the same. But the thing about parboiling rice is you only want to cook it partially. Parboiling is partially cooking your rice. And you want to keep it al dente, and you'll look at a grain of rice, and you'll see that it's done. It's like cooking pasta al dente. It needs to still be a little bit crunchy. The center will be white and the ends will be clear. And that's how you'll know that it's ready for layering. So the reason you only partially cook it is that for layered Persian rices, you're going to be adding vegetables and beans and fruit and nuts and things and the yummy parts. After it's been parboiled, you put the oil in and then you do layers. You'll do a layer of the parboiled rice, a layer of whatever toppings, a layer of the rice, and you'll layer it up. And then you'll make some steam holes with the back of your wooden spoon. You'll wrap up your lid like a present to hold the steam in. That's how I do it. And then you'll cook it the rest of the way, usually for almost an hour. Is that how you do your layered rices? Actually, I do my rice a little bit differently. So I start with getting the rice and depending on the type of rice, sometimes the rice can actually like grow a lot, you know, like when you, after you cook it. So it really depends on what quality and what kind of rice that you're going to be using for like the rice to water ratio, because if it grows a lot, then you need more water, obviously. So basically if I was going to cook like two cups of plain rice, what I would do is same as you did, I rinse it and I basically rinse it enough times that the water mostly goes clear. Then I put it in a pot, cover it and you know this is kind of like a rule of thumb I don't really have an exact measurement of like how much water to rice ratio but what I usually do is the wet rice is in the pot and I cover that the water is like an inch and a half higher than the rice and I add like a tablespoon or two of just regular oil olive oil or canola oil whatever you don't actually want to use anything that's too fragrant so if you have like really good olive oil you probably don't need to use that because it'll actually get the smell to it and like a like a teaspoon of salt just mix it a little bit together and I bring it to a boil and once it comes to a boil then I kind of lower the heat a little bit and I just let it cook like that without a lid on it until all of the water is absorbed And at that point, I can continue cooking it and then put the damkwani, the lid, as we mentioned. But if I want to make a tadik, what I do is I basically, I pour it into another bowl. And at the base of the original pot, what I do is add a little bit of oil. And if I'm going to be using saffron, I have bloom saffron that I add to the oil and a little bit of water. And I mix maybe like about a cup worth of the rice that was cooking into the bottom of the pot and mix that with the saffron and the oil and the water. And I flatten that out and I put the rest of the rice on top of that. And when you mentioned the steam holes, that's important to note too. Basically, you get like the back of a wooden spoon and go straight down the rice until it hits the bottom of the pan. So if you look at the rice, it looks like there's these circular holes on it. And that's basically for the steam to be able to come up from the bottom. 
Then I put the lid on it with the damkwini, with the little tea towel or paper towel or the little bonnet thing. And I put it on very low and I let it cook and steam like that for probably 30 to 40 minutes until the rice is done. That's how I cook my rice. So what I do if I'm layering it, I don't always cook the things that I want to layer it with within the pot. I cook the rice separately and then the whatever I'm layering it with, I layer it like in the platter when I want to serve it. So my technique is a little bit different. It's kind of like the lazy person's way to make it, but it works and it's pretty easy. And usually you can get like a pretty good tajik out of it. Yeah, I've made it that way too. It's uh, slightly different than what I was describing with the parboiling where you only cook it halfway and then you layer it back in the pot and let it cook the rest of the way. Yeah. The yummy spices and everything will. Yeah, really get absorbed into the rice. Yeah, and it's also a little bit more like pasta, but if I want to save time, I'll do the parboiling maybe even the day before or the morning of. Mm -hmm. What I do is if I'm going to make parboiled rice ahead before I'm going to layer it in my pot to cook it the rest of the way and eat it is I'll add a little bit extra oil to then fluff it up a little bit again so that it doesn't get sticky. When it's time to layer it back in, that's the time that either you go for tadig, putting a little extra oil down there because what tadig is is burning the bottom of the pot a little bit Mm -hmm. to get crispy, yummy goodness. I do have a YouTube video on how to parboil rice. If anyone wants to go the extra step of parboiling rice to make layered rices, we'll include the step-by-step YouTube video for parboiling rice. Mm -hmm. Can't talk about rice without talking about tadig. So Vita, tell us about all the different kinds of tadig there are, maybe which your favorites are. Yeah, tadik is so great. And every time that there's like a rice dish, everyone is like, where's the tadik? Where's the tadik? And, you know, people will fight over like the pieces Mm, of it. Yummy. Growing up, my mom would actually make an extra pot of rice just so there's more tadik because everyone is always just such a big fan. Oh, that's nice. And like you said, it's the bottom of the pot. and The rice basically gets toasted and golden on the bottom of the pot. And so when we mix it with the saffron, it it turns like even a more beautiful color. You don't actually don't have to do it with saffron if you don't want to. You could just do the plain white rice and that turns like a light gold in color but other things that you can use are thin slices of potato i love that there's like golden brown rounds of potato on the bottom of the pot you can also use lavash bread and that is really delicious actually the tip for that though you're not really supposed to use water when you make the tadik on that and it can actually burn pretty quickly so you have to be a little bit more careful but layering the lavash bread oh my god is so delicious And lately, people have been using more creative things. Some people use different like lettuces. You know, on Instagram, they were having like a tajik contest to see like the cool ways that you can make tajik and putting actual scenes in the bottom of the pot, just making it super unique. So you can use other things, but the primary versions are rice, bread, or potato. So if you haven't tried it, I definitely encourage you to try to make it. Or if you go to a restaurant, see if they have it. A lot of the restaurants don't, but... You know, we talked about how there's some restaurants that have like a secret menu. If you ask them if they have tajik, you can maybe get a little taste, but it's really delicious. So those are the main kinds of tajiks. I love that you talked about the unique ways to make tajik because you and I were unique. Yes. In our names, in ourselves. Bita means unique. And Mm -hmm. we're modern. We're modern Persian food. Yeah. My favorite way of making tajik and how I make it is I use tortilla. Yes. (laughs) That is a really good tip. Just like the regular tortilla, huh? I used whole wheat. Mm -hmm. Whole wheat. And then if you use a nonstick pot, you don't need to use as much oil. So that is what holds me back from making it every time is Mm -hmm. you do need to put quite a bit of oil so that your tadig doesn't burn. Mm -hmm. The other thing is I like to salt it. It's kind of like popcorn to me. Oh my God. I never thought of salting tadig in the pot. Oh, yeah. My husband actually really loves a bunch of salt on his tadik, uh-huh. but I never thought of doing it in the pot itself. Sometimes putting saffron too uh-huh. before, like as it's cooking. And have you seen this on social media is spaghetti teddy? Yes. I have not tried it. Somehow they take spaghetti, like already made spaghetti with sauce and everything, and put a bunch of oil in the pot and burn it a little. And then flip it. And then is there rice in it too? No, it's just pasta. It's like Persian pasta because they actually cook it like how they cook rice. They basically let it steam in there. And that's how they actually make the tadik too. And the pasta finishes cooking as it's steaming. I think I'm in love with Persian pasta and I have not met her or him. (laughs) Macaroni as the proper Persian way to say pasta, macaroni. And all pasta falls into that. It's not like, oh, rotini or penne. It's all called macaroni. (laughs) 
to talk about some layered rices and what my favorite layered rice dish is of all the favorite rice dishes, jeweled rice. Mm -hmm. It's this beautiful rice. It is an assault of all the senses because it's beautiful and colorful. It's aromatic Mm -hmm. and it's flavorful. So what is jeweled rice? It's the absolute queen of rice, and it's a celebration rice. It's served at weddings traditionally. Uh Persian jeweled rice, it has another couple of names. Could you help me out? Yeah, like javohir rice or morasse rice, too. I think it might be a little bit different. The morasse one is more with barberries, which are like these little tart little berries. They're called zedeshk in Farsi, and you can actually make just that with the layered rice. Yes. How I make Persian jeweled rice is I actually buy mixed dried fruit. The combination that I love, I like dried apricots. I like dried cherries. I will throw in some dates and yellow raisins. And then I Mm. will toast pistachio nuts and sometimes almonds. And yes, there is sugar. There is butter. And it also has carrots and orange rind. Mm -hmm. And so this is all cooked together and sauteed in this sugary, splendid, sweet, delightful topping that goes on top of rice. And you can imagine how beautiful it is. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it with pomegranate arrows. There's all sorts of unique ways that you can make it Mm -hmm. and have your own touch. It's a celebration rice. It's served at weddings and In our wedding, we had it in a country club, which we weren't allowed to bring our own caterer. And I really, really wanted to have this rice. So I shared the recipe with the chef. He learned how to make it and he made it at our wedding. And many Persian weddings are buffet style, Uh you know, these big long lines and you end up eating dinner late because you have to dance and celebrate. And then comes the amazing food. But we had a combination of a Western and Persian wedding. And so the chef at the country club learned to make this rice, served it out on plates next to some, I don't know, filet mignon medallions. And it was just amazing. And I was so happy. Have you ever made it? I haven't made it exactly that version. So I would use like the barberries with pistachios and almonds and saffron and kind of cook it the same way that you said, and then layer that within the rice after it was cooked. It's actually a very easy way to do it. And if you don't want to use barberries, you can use dried cranberries. You mentioned the orange slivers. So like one cheat that I'll use sometimes if I want to make like a type of shirin polo. And shirin polo is just like basically a sweet rice that has candied orange peel in it. I'll actually use like marmalade. Mm. Like orange peel marmalade. Oh. Like warm it up. And then I mix that with the rice. And so that is like a really easy way to make shirin polo. That's a good cheat. I had not heard about using marmalade. I have heard about using orange blossom water. Uh huh. I don't do it. I just go for sugar. And yeah. actual orange rind and carrots yeah. are sweet too. Everything about it is sweet. Yeah. And then another like cheat when it comes to like a jam marmalade trick is there's a jam called albalu, which is a sour cherry. So they have a jam and you could do the same thing with that and layer it in the rice and then you have albalu polo. I have done that. Mm-hmm. That's a good way. If we just want to touch on some more savory rice dishes, adas polo or rishta polo. Adas polo is layered rice that has lentils in it. And so you kind of par cook the lentils and layer those in. Also with rishta polo, which are like little short little noodles. And what you do is you basically layer that in into the final steps and it actually cooks with it. And it has like a really sweet topping on it. So we'll saute raisins and dates with saffron and some onions sometimes and use that as a topping to garnish the platter when you have adas polo or rishta polo. And so that actually adds a sweet element to it. You don't have to do that, obviously, if you don't really want sweet things on it, but it really adds like a fun, delicious element to those dishes. Yes, adas polo, I make it quite a bit. And Mm -hmm. one of the things I love about adas polo is Persian lentil rice. And I do have a recipe post and a video on how to make that. We'll include the links. Lentils, they are a superfood. They are so nutritious. My grandmother used to say that it's brain food. Uh And so I would eat lentils and adas polo while I was pregnant. Oh, smart. So we have really smart kids. And then when I make adas polo, I will increase the ratio and have it be more adas or lentils 
uh-huh. per amount of rice just to make the nutritional value go up. Because let's face it, as delicious as rice is, it doesn't mm-hmm. have a lot of nutritional value being a nutritionist. Mm-hmm. To that point, when we go to restaurants, when we're ordering kebab, they always bring a huge amount of rice yeah. to the table. Right. Like I'm talking yeah. more than half of the plate is the rice. the rice. So when we go to Persian restaurants, and this has been the trend in the last maybe 10 years, we say half rice, half salad. You just kind of look at the waiter a certain way, and he, he's like, half rice, half salad, half rice, half salad. But then when it gets to my, like, my husband and my mom, they're like, oh, no, give us yeah, all, all of it. the rice. I want all the rice. <laughs> yeah. My problem is if it's in front of me, I'll eat it. <laughs> yes. But, you know, for me, like, I just want the real Persian rice. I prefer it over, let's say, the health benefits of brown rice to white rice. You know, it's minimally better for you. But to me, just control the portions, you know, mm-hmm. a, a fistful. Just control the portions and have the good stuff. Good. That's a good point. I'll have to remember that. And another thing, these layered rice dishes, they can actually be vegan, essentially, because a lot of the times they are served with meat, but you don't have to serve it with meat. They could just be vegetarian or vegan. If you want to add butter, that's great. But if you really want it to be vegan, just admit the butter too, and you have well-rounded rice dishes. That's a good point. Right. And many of them are loaded with plant-based protein and healthy beans and Persian food's good for you. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Well, that was really great. I love talking about rice and rice is just a staple and pillar of our cuisine. And we're coming towards the end of our episode, but we are ready now for the Ask the Beats section where we ask our listeners to give us a question or something that they want us to talk about. And today's topic comes from Trish from Menlo Park. And she asks us, what is your go-to dish? So Bita, why don't you tell us what is your go-to dish? You know, since we do make a lot of rice in the rice cooker, I really like to take leftover rice and turn it into that baked rice dish that you brought up, Bita, tachin. And it's so easy to use with the leftover rice. I just stir up some eggs, add saffron and yogurt, and then I put that at the bottom of the pot with chicken. Sometimes we'll just Mm -hmm. use rotisserie chicken and you stir it all together. And I do have a recipe for that on my site and bake it in the oven and it is gone in like a day. It's so good. How about you? Do you have a go-to? You know, I think one of my go-to dishes is lubia polo. (laughs) I talked about it briefly here. We talked about it in other episodes where it's like the green bean and onion and meat mixture that has like cinnamon and other spices in it that is just a super easy dish for me to make. And I can like cook that and then I cook the rice and I like layer it in it's like a go-to in our family. So I would say that that would be my go-to dish that I love to eat and serve to my friends and family. And I like to obviously talk about a lot. (laughs) Mm, Yes. Lubia Polo is right up there with one of our favorites. Well, this has been so much fun talking about rice. Thank you, Vita. Until next time. So you've been listening to Modern Persian Food with Bita and Bita. Thanks for spending time with us. If you enjoyed what you heard today, consider telling your friends or giving us a good rating on iTunes. You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com for recipes and info that we talked about today. Thanks so much. We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time. Mm